Snack and others uh, play this game of, oh, it's about Islamists, but also the far right. Yeah, there are some, some far right people in the UK and they are completely on the fringes and they're disliked by everybody and they don't have any place in our democracy. They, they're not in Parliament. They don't get voted into Parliament. Rishi Sunak had to summon up the spectre of the former head of the British National Party, Nick Griffin, who's had absolutely no presence in public life for 13 or 14 years now, had to summon up hit him up like a ghoul uh, as an example of the far right. But the, I go back to this point. What if you're just a concerned voter in Rochdale yeah. who has seen the Muslim rape gangs in your area, who has seen all of the equivocation of the political class and has seen everybody who's spoken up about it decried as far right. You know, where exactly are you allowed a voice on this? Yes, where? exactly. And that's the thing. And again, I think lots of people watching that speech that Richie Snack made were sort of quite shocked by, again, these sort of, on the one hand, far right, on the one hand, Islamist extremism, when I'm not aware of the far right playing a role in our democ democratic procedures being oh. changed a couple of weeks ago as a result of the far right. The Hello, guys. What's up? Hi, guys. I hope you guys are feeling good. Welcome back to the show. Now, this is a real simple. <laughs> this one is funny. This is Douglas Murray calls out UK Prime Minister for being double standard. We know how it is that Douglas Murray can be so furious when it comes to things like this. And anyway, let's dive and check this clip out. Let's go. But the, I go back to this point. What if you're just a concerned voter in Rochdale who has seen the Muslim rape gangs in your area, who has seen all of the equivocation of the political class and has seen everybody who's spoken up about it decried as far right? You know, where exactly are you allowed a voice on this? Yes, Where? exactly. You are about to witness Douglas Murray completely expose the British government and the double standards of government officials in the UK. Douglas Murray unashamedly calls out British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and sends a chilling warning to all of us. Douglas Murray did not hold back. I mean, uh, Rochdale, as most people watching will know, uh, is the scene of one of the most appalling uh, rape gang scandals in modern Britain. And uh, there's an interesting conundrum that it, that throws itself up here, which is uh, what happens if uh, you are a voter in Rochdale who has uh, seen uh, this happen in your neighborhood, who knows it happening, who probably knows of victims, and uh, you'd like to get your voice heard. Well, well, well here are the options. Uh, you can uh, make your voice heard in the way that most of us can in democracy, which is to speak up, uh, make your voice heard by, you know, going out on the streets or attending a demonstration or something. But no, 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 no. If you did that, you would be decried as a member of the far right immediately. Um, because you're not allowed to have a, a voice on matters like that if you happen to be uh, a particularly white and working class, let alone a white working class male, which it seems is 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 the least um, pleasant thing to be in the eyes of much of the commentariat in the UK. You're not meant to have a voice. But let's say instead of turning out on the streets or making your voice heard in opposition to rape gangs, then you waited patiently to exercise your vote in the democratic process. Well, well then you have um, a bunch of people uh, ranting about the Jews and uh, friends of Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad uh, uh, all showing up and again pandering to the local Muslim vote and you don't really have a say then either. Yeah. So when Rishi Sunak and others uh, play this game of oh it's about Islamists but also the far right, yeah there are some, some far right people in the UK and they are completely on the fringes and they're disliked by everybody and they don't have any place in our democracy. They, they're not in Parliament. They don't get voted into Parliament. Rishi Sunak had to summon up the spectre of the former head of the British National Party, Nick Griffin, who's had absolutely no presence in public life for 13 or 14 years now, had to summon up hit him up like a ghoul uh, as an example of the far right. But the, I go back to this point. What if you're just a concerned voter in Rochdale yeah. who has seen the Muslim rape gangs in your area, who has seen all of the equivocation of the political class and has seen everybody who's spoken up about it decried as far right. You know, 
where exactly are you allowed a voice on this? Yes, where? exactly. And that's the thing. And again, I think lots of people watching that speech that Richie Snack made were sort of quite shocked by, again, these sort of, on the one hand, far right, on the one hand, Islamist extremism, when I'm not aware of the far right playing a role in our democ democratic procedures being oh. changed a couple of weeks ago as a result of the far right. The threats to MPs <laughs> right now are coming from Islamist extremism, said, oh. not from the far right. Douglas Murray sheds light on Rochdale, a town now synonymous with horrific incidents of child exploitation. But the outrage isn't just about the crimes, it's about the systemic failures and the refusal to address the ideological underpinnings of the perpetrators. While the Prime Minister's speech dances around the issue, Murray courageously points to the elephant in the room, the involvement of Islamist ideology. The invocation of the far right as a significant threat, in this context, is a classic red herring. It's important to understand the scale and context here. According to the UK's Home Office statistics, while there has been an increase in far-right activity, the predominant source of terror-related arrests still traces back to Islamist extremism. For example, in the year ending 31 March 2020, out of the total terror-related arrests, in the UK a significant portion were linked to Islamist terrorism. The reluctance to directly address Islamist ideology in crimes like those in Rochdale isn't just a failure of political leadership, it's a societal issue. It's indicative of a broader unwillingness to engage with difficult conversations about ideology, community relations, and integration. Murray's insistence on calling out this avoidance isn't just about critiquing a speech. It's about urging a more honest and open discourse on these pressing issues. Experts like Maya Jeed Nawaz, a former Islamist who now campaigns against extremism, echo Murray's concerns. Nawaz often discusses the necessity of distinguishing between the religion of Islam and the political ideology of Islamism, which can inspire extremism. This distinction is crucial, yet frequently overlooked in mainstream discourse, leading to a blurring of lines that helps neither those within Muslim communities nor society at large. Okay, I see, I see a lot of things have been said here, like a real lot of things, and Douglas Murray have actually made a lot of points, a lot of serious points where when people commit crime in your country, they have to be spoken to, they have to be corrected, they have to be like they should be corrected so that that crime wouldn't repeat again no matter no matter how or who they are if they are not corrected the the crime will happen again imagine there's a rape gang in in his area and they can't be corrected it will happen again so i feel like i i see the reason why douglas Murray is calling out the uk prime ministers because he feel like he's not taking enough action and a lot of actions have to be taken, no matter who the person is, whether immigrant, citizen, or a passerby. Anyways, let me know what you think about this video. I'll be so happy to check your comment out. And if you want your voice to be heard, come outside. Let them hear you. There's freedom of speech. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep watching and watch out for more. Peace and God bless you.